Hey everybody, Miguel here. Today I want to talk about a topic that many APG customers ask me about. This is, how do you call the APG management APIs? I want to divide the video into two parts. First, I'm going to show you the simple case. I'm going to call the management APIs using basic auth credentials. That is, just my username and password. Then, I'm going to enable single sign-on in my APG organization and I'm going to repeat the same API call but instead of using basic auth credentials, I'm going to be using an OAuth token. Let's go ahead and get started. Over here on the left side, you can see that we have the different type of resources that are available in the APG Management API. Let's take a look at the organization's resource. Here, we can see that there's multiple resources under this organization's resource. Let's look at the organization one. This is one of the simplest calls that we can make to the management API. It takes only one parameter, which is the name of the organization and the set of credentials. I have already entered the name in here, so let's set the credentials. You can see my username and password is already pre-filled, so I'm just going to hit save. Now let's go ahead and send this request. You can see that it succeeded. I got an HTTP 200 back, so this is great. Now. You're not restricted to making API calls from this UI. There's many HTTP clients you can use. This just happens to be one of them, and it happens to be included with the APG documentation, so it makes things really simple. There's many other clients out there that you can use. For example, one very popular one is Postman. You probably heard about it before. We also have a tab here for curl. Curl is a client for the command line. You can see here that this is a curl command that you would have to execute to make this API call. All right, so let's go over each of the parameters here to understand what they mean. First, we see this part right here. This is telling curl that we're going to be sending an HTTP GET request. Then we're passing one header. This is telling the server side that we expect to receive data formatted as JSON. Next, we're passing the actual authorization header. This is what contains my username and password. This weird string right here it's actually my username and password that has been basic C4 encoded. Finally, this is the actual URL of the API that we're going to invoke. Now, let's go ahead and actually make the call. I'm going to add dash V at the end to make it verbose. And we can see here that it actually succeeded. Here's the actual you know, URL that's being invoked, the headers that are being passed, and the response that's coming back from the server. All right, so this is the simplest case. I have made an API call to the APG management APIs using my username and password passed in as basic auth credentials. For the next part of the video, I'm going to enable single sign-on on my APG organization, and we're going to try this same API call again. So let's go ahead and log into my APG organization. All right, so sign in. So next I'm just going to go to the admin interface and go to the configuration section for single sign-on. Right now you can see I have none specified I have already configured a few identity providers. Uh, let's use Okta for this example. Let me go ahead and confirm this and it should be saving really quickly. There we go. All right, so now that I have enabled Okta to be the identity provider for this organization, we're gonna go ahead and try that same API call we did earlier. What do you expect is gonna happen? shouldn't actually succeed. The reason is because we have now delegated the user authentication to a third party. Only Okta should be able to verify the username and password. So it doesn't really matter whatever I pass to APG in the API calls, it shouldn't be able to verify it. So let's give that a try. I'm gonna go back to that terminal and let's run that previous command. And we can see here that, yes, we passed in the authorization and 
we got a an HTTP error saying, hey, you're not allowed to make this call. So that was expected. Okay, well, if this doesn't work, then how do we authenticate to use these APIs? Remember, at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that we could use OAuth. This is actually explained in great detail in the IPG documentation. So let's go and jump over there and take a look. All right, so we're going to go to docs.apg.com and let's search for single sign-on management APIs. And there it is, first result. Let's click on it. How do we access the Edge API with SAML? And uh, let's scroll down a little bit and here. So we're going to need to get an OAuth access token. And there's a couple of steps we need to do. First, we need to get what's called a one-time passcode. Then once we have this one-time passcode, we exchange the passcode for an actual access token. Finally, once we have the access token, we can just call the APG Management API with this token. Let's go ahead and try that. All right, so let's start with step number one. It says right here, in a browser, go to the following URL to obtain a one-time passcode. And this is the URL. It also gives us an example. So it's obvious that we have to replace zone name with the actual zone name. If I go back to the single sign-on configuration page, I can see that for Okta, the zone name is demo1337-Okta. So that's what I'm going to be using. All right, so let me copy the URL and in a new tab, let's go here and replace the zone name. All right, so we can see right away, this doesn't look like the usual APG login page. It, it's, it's not asking us for a username or password. All it says, login with SAML. And this is expected because we have enabled single sign-on. So let's go ahead and click on login with SAML. You can see now that we have been redirected to the Okta sign-in page. I have already pre-filled my username and password, so I'm just gonna go ahead and sign in. Great, so now we have the one-time passcode. Let's go back to the instructions. For the second step, we're going to be making a call to the APG OAuth token endpoint. We're going to be using the password grant type. And the actual password that we're gonna be sending is the one that we just obtained in the first step. Let me copy this command to a text editor so we can edit it. All right, so let's paste it in here. I'm going to update the zone name. And let's put in the passcode. Great. Now let's copy paste this into a terminal and execute it. Awesome. So we can see we have a successful response and we have an access token. Here's the actual access token. We're going to be using this in the next step to make an actual API call. So let's take this token and save it in the text editor. Next, let's go back to the documentation page with the management APIs and let's grab the original curl command. I'm gonna paste it back in here in the text editor. I'm gonna break it down so that it's easier to edit. So, the idea here is that we're not gonna be sending the basic auth credentials anymore. Instead, we're gonna be sending this token right here. So let's change this. Great, so let's go ahead and try this out. Let's 
first put the token next let's execute the actual command awesome so we can see that it was successful okay folks hopefully you were able to follow along if you have any questions leave them in the comments below or ask in the apg community finally if you found this video useful don't forget to leave a like oh one more thing in the next video i'm planning to continue this topic and explain how to automate all this process using service credentials all right see you in the next video